I'm Mark Rossner. I'm a technical marketing engineer with Cisco Server Products Group. This video will demonstrate Windows Server 2012 R2 interactive installation on a UCS M series server using the standard OS DVD image and the KVM virtual media. I'll start off by doing a really fast review of a service profile or service profile template that points to a storage profile. For more information about the concepts of UCSM series virtual local storage and the configuration of storage profiles and disk group policies in UCS Manager, please see the UCSM series virtual local storage video. We'll look at the driver files needed in Windows. You can KVM virtual media map the entire download from cisco.com. And even if you're inserting drivers at install time, you can navigate down inside there. We'll have to install SNCC, the virtual local storage driver at install time. Otherwise we won't find anything to install onto. ENIC, which is the ethernet driver for the VIC. We could install that later. The driver is also not in versions of Windows that currently exist. We might as well insert it at install time since we're doing the SNIC anyway. Finally, I'll do a live demo of the install procedure and as I go through, I'll do some gotchas and best practices. For Windows, there is one thing you have to do after installation, which is install the chipset drivers. That's a regular Windows installer, so there's no way to insert that at install time. I'm going to go online in UCS Manager and take a quick look at the template that I'm going to use to install Windows, and then I'll instantiate it and get everything going. Specifically, want to look at the Storage tab and the new LUN configuration feature that specifies that I'm going to have one 50 gig disk in a RAID 1 mirrored configuration that's controlled by the chassis, but this will be my virtual local storage for the server. The configuration is not applied yet since I don't even have a service profile yet, just a template. That's all that's really special for M series as opposed to B series. Just to take a quick look at what I have in the network, a standard Ethernet 0 and Ethernet 1 going to A and B, like might be a best practice, and the boot order so that I do boot off the CD DVD virtual media image and then the local disk after that. Okay, I'm ready to create a service profile from this template just so I can find it. Let me call it AAA Win. I didn't have a server pool associated with the template, so this service profile is not yet associated with a server. Once again, that means while there's still a LUN specification, there's not really a LUN since I don't know what chassis I'm talking about yet. But now let me associate it with any server. Association is very fast. This part is in real time and I'm not doing any cuts this second. And it's done already. Once again, going back to the storage view. And now that it's associated, I have an actual 50 gig LUN to be used as the boot disk with configuration state applied, carved out of the shared chassis storage. So I'm ready to invoke the KVM console and get this guy going. Here I am just to make sure everything's in the right order. Let me map the virtual media. So I say activate virtual devices. and map the CD player to the Windows image. And I'm ready to power this guy on and it should fall directly into the Windows 2012 R2 installer. Notice you do see right on the BIOS a report that it sees that virtual local LUN 50 gig. And I'm falling into the Windows installer. Okay, here I am beginning the installer. Let me select the full data center OS with the GUI. And notice that it can't find a drive to install on. It can't detect the virtual local storage because there's no driver. So at this point, I have to insert the SNIC driver definitely. Let me click load driver. Now before I do browse for a driver at this point, unmap the Windows virtual media.
and map the full download M-series drivers that I got from Cisco.com. Give that a few seconds to digest. Now I have to browse down there and I can find the storage drivers. So under the CD, Windows, Storage, Cisco. For some reason they call this VIC instead of SNIC, but it is the right thing. And S64 down here. And it does find the SNIC driver and I can have next to have it load the SNIC driver off of that image. Okay, notice it says it found the disk, though it says Windows can't be installed on this drive. We'll come back to that in a second. While I'm here and the Cisco.com download is already mapped, I might as well load the Ethernet driver as well. It's already there. I can just browse. have to start back at the beginning. Windows, Network, Cisco, Vic, 212R2, X64, and yes, it found the VIC driver for Ethernet. And I can load that as well. Now I can come back to this problem with the disk where it says Windows can't be installed on this drive. All I have to do is unmap the driver's image and map back the Windows OS installer image. And then I can click refresh and then I'll be ready to go. So let me unmap that guy. And map back the Windows. And now I can click refresh here. And it's much happier and it's ready to install on this drive. And it's on its way. And it's successfully installed and booted back off the hard disk. And I have a new OS. We can take a look at Device Manager and just confirm that it has our network drivers correctly. It obviously has to have the storage drivers, or I wouldn't have been able to install in the first place. But I can go look at Device Manager. And here's the network adapter, and it sees our Cisco VIC. Of course, the disk drives. This is the one here. That's our virtual local storage. And the only other thing I want to do is install the chipset drivers. So I'm going to have to go back in the virtual media unmap the Windows medium, map back my drivers from Cisco.com. Then I can manually navigate down there and the installer for the chipset drivers is a regular Windows installer. So let me just go onto the DVD. Windows chipset. And I have to know what model of server I have. You could get that from UCS Manager from the server details for your service profile. Happen to have M142. And here's the installer for the chipset. So I can just run that. And I'm all done. And I shouldn't have any more unknown devices in the device manager. And that's about it. Thank you for watching.